Hello and welcome back to our Iron Man challenge. Now, I very much appreciate all of the support you've shown and all of your comments because they've been very, very helpful indeed. And uh, otherwise, what do we have going on here? Well, we have a tournament, but what else do we have going on? We have something pretty amazing going on in the form of Deshavi and Artie Mena now being in our party, which is so fantastic because let's face it, I was looking for these for a long time and finally I was able to find them. Can you guess where they actually were? They were in the same town, in the same tavern, right next to each other. <laughs> Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Anyway, thankfully we now have Artimena and Shavi and uh, we're just going to move them to the top because let's face it we need them to get some experience and even if they do yeah even if they do get eliminated it's not really going to be that big a deal at the moment even though deshavi has got some really nice pathfinding right there that is going to be so incredibly useful as we go forward so anyway i did cover Artie Mena's stats in the previous episode so i'm not gonna take a look at his stats just yet until he levels up and otherwise what we are going to need to do is get him a shield and a helm as soon as possible. And then otherwise, Deshavi, we haven't really covered her that much. So what we're going to do is just take a look at her stats real quick. She is, of course, going to be a really, really good bow user. And in general, that's that's most of the time what I am going to be specking into with her, basically, uh, as much as possible. She doesn't have anything in horse archery, so I'm not going to turn her into a horse archer or anything like that. But what I will do is I am going to emphasize... Uh, probably probably pathfinding let's face it she's got three in it already and probably spotting as well as tracking because all of these are intelligence based abilities and on top of that then you can turn her into a trainer or something like that which is going to be really good and I believe if we can get to power draw four then she can use the war bow which I mentioned in the previous episode as well and that's going to be really, really powerful for her. At the moment, she's just using a regular hunting bow, which is decent. You know, I'm, I'm not knocking it by any means. It's okay for a starter bow, but it is, well, vastly inferior to what the war bow is going to be. And she, of course, needs some additional gear too. Clethy, by the way, did come back into the fold, which is really nice. Oh yeah, and by the way, just before I found Artimena and Deshavi, I found Marnid, and I thought to myself, okay, I'm just going to get Marnid because he has some trade skill, and it could help us out quite a bit, and uh, I recruited him, and then I sent him off to get some right to rule, and then I found Artimena and Deshavi. So, pretty, pretty lucky in, in all things, although I did have to check, like, what? five six different towns before i found them so that is kind of harsh but anyway we are going to go into this tournament here because someone did say why am i not doing tournaments well the reason why i'm not doing tournaments is because i actually failed twice earlier on in the series if you did miss that then i'd highly recommend checking it out anyway because it is a fun time <laughs> is it is it a fun time oh i killed dranton nice oh i like it very good i like killing dranton he's always quite the bane for me so I very much appreciate killing him, or at least knocking him out. So 14, oh dear, I've got a two-handed sword. This is going to be problematic. Ah, uh, yeah, this is going to be bad. Okay, come on now. Okay, uh, thankfully this is not, not, uh, not an unbalanced weapon. Easy. Oh yes, Count Rimask, you're easy. Just like your wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should I go that far? No, I probably shouldn't go that far. Let's face it, he's probably going to kill me in the next round. You mark my words. Count Rimusk. Count Rimusk. He's going to kill me in the next round. What do you think? Look, he's still there. Okay. Place your bets. Oh, it's going to happen. Count Rimusk is literally going to be the guy that will eliminate me, if anyone, because I insulted him in a pretty bad way. So, well, we'll see. Anyway, let's have a look here. A bit worried about this. But I should be okay. There we go. Yes, nice. Okay, now we do have... What is that? That's a crossbowman and that's an archer. So I'm basically... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to back off. And I'm going to hope that the crossbowman can kill the archer. Because the crossbowman is going to be much easier for me to deal with for the most part. So if I can just fake out the archer and maybe just have them waste all of their arrows. Is this the, is this the Shavi, by the way, shooting at me right now? 
actually unsure about that because I think I saw her name in the list. So it might very well be the case. But we just got to keep moving here. Because if you keep on moving to the left and you don't move to the right every so often, they're going to be able to track your movements really, really easily. So it's a good idea to do a little bit of something here. Whoa, that was close. Okay, hello. I'm right here with you. Okay, let's try and kill. Let's try and kill. Ah, there we go. Okay, nice block. There we go. Mercenary Swordsman, you're useless. You could barely kill this archer. I don't know who this archer is. If it's Dashavi, she's actually really accurate for the most part. Thankfully, I do have a decent amount of shield skill, however, so I should be absolutely fine. Doesn't look like it is Dashavi, actually, so... What do you bet this is Count Remusk? No, it's Count Trimbao, and he was one hit away from being eliminated, so I guess that's pretty good. Anyway, let's have a look. Count Remusk, he's still here. Dranton is still here. Sword Sisters are still here. Four teams with two fighters each. Okay, well, you know what I'm going to... Oh, dear. I'm, oh, this is problematic, isn't it? This is bad. Thankfully, Dranton was already eliminated. I'm being focused again by another unit with a bow, which is not very nice. Okay, kill this. Kill kill the sword sister. Yes, there we go. And now... Oh, yeah, there we go. Trim bow, that's what you get. And now... Get on this. Get on the horse. Get on, get on the horse. Why can I not get on this? I don't know why. It's not coming up with the with the prompt. There it is. Okay. Phew. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Oof. 1% HP this thing has. That's that's very useful, isn't it? Not. And there's Count Remusk. <laughs> okay. Good work, person that was on my team. You did a good job. All right. This is the furthest we have ever gotten in the tournament. <laughs> Cross your fingers. Two teams with one fighter. Oh. This is bad for me. Actually, this is really, really bad. Do I have anything else? No, I literally just have this lance. If I get my horse killed here, I'm done. Okay, I dealt 52 damage, but he's not dead. And my horse is about to die. All right, let's do this. No, I can't do it. I, uh, okay, now, now, I'm, now I'm psyching myself out. That's what's, that's what's happening here. There we go. Trimbao, you scoundrel. Why are you here? I have no idea. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so who is it? It's a sword sister. Okay, I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought it was going to be Count Remusk, but no. Okay, oh. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is kind of bad. If you didn't know, I don't have any power draw skill. <laughs> Person that said I should get power draw skill, mm, yes, you are nodding your head. You are saying you should have gotten the power draw skill. This would have helped out quite a bit. But I'm basically just trying to take out her horse, because she's going to be absolutely useless without the horse. And then I can just kind of pepper her down. I have like a pretty decent amount of archery ammunition. <laughs> uh, I saved that sentence. Not. Okay. Anyway, let's just continue onward here. See if I can do some damage. Bear in mind, I also do not have any horse archery. And I'm I'm still dealing some damage. You know, I'm still dealing a little bit of damage here and there. It's not amazing, but it is a little bit. And that's all I really need. So we're just going to do this because let's face it. Oh, yeah, there we go. She can't survive forever. And there it is. Nice. 4,000 dinars. Over 4,000. And we have 20 renown as well. Ooh, wow, that's just great. That is just fantastic. Okay, usually I would just completely leave this feast alone and I would not come in here and speak to these guys, but I thought, hey, you know what, let's just let's just go in, see if I can maybe get a little bit of relation with some of them. Maybe I can speak to the... Uh, nah, that's not really going to work. Yeah, now usually what I would do is, you know, just have the, the, the liege here, but he's actually not here for some reason. So we're just going to meet everyone. And uh, what we could also do is if we wanted to, we could romance one of these lovely ladies if we wanted to. Personally, I'm not going to do that because what I would like to do instead is probably uh, try and court a lady from a faction that I'm actually going to be, you know, staying with for the foreseeable future with vassals and so on and so forth. Now, look at this. This is kind of amazing. You can buy Velvet here for a pretty 
pretty cheap price, actually. You can buy this for a very, very cheap price. And you can, I think, sell it at Rivercheg. I think someone told me that you can sell it at Rivercheg for, for a pretty decent amount as well. So let's actually buy three. Oh, no, not three. Oh, okay, let's just buy two because the price goes up exponentially. So let's just buy two and see how it goes. Uh, I believe that Beheshtar and Bandaka are here. I'm not going to be taking those. But I would like to send one off for a right to rule boost. So I'm just going to see if I can speak to him. And yep, there we go. He's, he can go off and do that. Because as I said in the previous episode, you can send off companions a few days after sending out another one. So you can kind of keep them rolling, if you know what I mean. And that's a pretty good way to do things. Actually, I'm going to pick up Bunduk as well for the sole purpose of doing this. And there is actually another tournament going on here too. So if I want to, I could do that. Should I do another tournament? It might make sense. Uh, yeah, mm, yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay, I mean, it's not really going to... Oh, it's going to give me really not that much money. That's the only problem with doing a tournament twice in a row. You really are not going to get the same amount of cash that you would... Uh, the first time so it is yeah may, i'm probably gonna die here anyway so i mean not die but you know get knocked out so it will probably be something that i don't really want to bother with too much but we're gonna try nevertheless there we go okay so i eliminated that guy at least i can now move on four teams okay so i've got a crossbow here technically i could use this crossbow there's a nice headshot, and uh, we can maybe block him, and there we go, take him out. That's Count Rimusk again. Ah, <laughs> oh, it seems like he is going to absolutely hate us. It would be quite amusing if the relation of each of these lords would go down and become negative if you eliminate them in tournaments. But there you go. Okay, so that's done as well. Fantastic. And what else do we have going on here? Oh, this is actually pretty good. The, the, wow, the green team or whoever we are currently fighting with usually does a very good job. They seem to be fighting really, really nicely, as you can see right there. Oh! Well, I guess that's me eliminated. I guess that doesn't really matter. I, I just spent, like, what, 300 or something like that there? Not really a big deal. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to head back up to Rivercheg, and we are going to see exactly what's going on with the silk that we've just purchased. And yes, I do realize that we didn't bring the wheat to uh, Zhejek, but that's that's not really anything, you know, it's nothing to really worry about so much. And, oh wow, you can actually sell it here for much more. Look at that. You can actually sell it right here next door for a pretty significant sum. But anyway, we're going to make our way back to Rivercheg, and then we'll probably do a couple more fights couple more fights with sea raiders and then we'll see what we can do after that because we definitely want to get that weavery and dye works yeah now now we're having some issues here yeah she, he doesn't like clethy as far as i'm aware so that's kind of annoying but i'm i'm hoping that we can find lezolit because i think that he i think that artimena likes lezolit a lot and this would uh be pretty good so I guess I'm just going to side with Artimena for the moment because I would prefer to have tactics and engineering and uh, trainer over looting for the moment. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But otherwise, as I said, we'll probably fight a couple of Sea Raiders just to get us over the 10k threshold and then we'll buy a Weaver and Die Works in Rivercheg and that should give us a pretty sizable amount of cash over time and who knows maybe there's another sea raider landing here or something like that so yeah look at this you can sell this velvet for 963 which is just insane and we bought it for what 500 and 700 so a pretty significant profit right there of about 500 dinars oh he can't even oh he can't even afford it well i guess what i could do is i could buy silk here because uh, someone actually did mention a uh, an updated trade route. And basically what it is, is if you go to Rivercheck and buy Silk, which is what we have right here, and then go to Wercheg, sell the, sell the Silk, buy the Salt, and there's another Sea Raider landing right there as well. So that's pretty fantastic. We probably want to speak to Boyar Mariga as soon as possible. Uh, okay, I don't want you having any more fights with him. I really don't want Clethy to leave either, to be honest. 
well, let's see how it goes. But anyway, yeah, so then you can come over here and you can sell the raw silk and then you can buy all of the salt. <laughs> you can see where this is going, can't you? And we go down to Sargoth once again. And if you go down to Sargoth once again, let me just see what my relation is here. Okay, so my relation is minus one with, with Jaek now, but it's not that big a deal. I can just take another task there at any point and then just, you know, get it back up to uh, a positive standpoint. But otherwise, yeah, then you, get, you take the salt to Sargoth, which is what we're doing right now, and you sell all of that for profit, as you can see. So we now have over 9,000. Oh, it's over 9,000. Yeah, exactly. And then you can go over to Curor. And now here's the here's the thing where I can't really do anything else because I think we're... Are we currently at war against the Carnate? No, we're not. We're not at war against anyone. Oh, okay. So that's fantastic because that means that I can actually go to Tolga. But anyway, you can buy iron here for a relatively cheap price. And then... You can go down to Ravidin, and you can sell this for uh, yeah, not as much, yeah, not as not, not as much of a profit, but it's still decent. Then you can go to Tolga, and you can buy silk and things, and continue onward. Ah, there you go. There's Marnit. Okay, so I'm actually going to tell Marnit to uh, go away now, because, well, we don't really we don't really need him, and uh, we're we're going to say to Bunduk to go off and do some more right to rule. And yeah, so we're going to go to Tolga now and we're going to buy silk, I believe it is, silk and spices. This is all from memory, by the way. I have nothing written down, which is still baffling me. I really should write these things down. But if I make any mistakes, then I will just correct those on the screen, as you've seen, no doubt, already. And yeah, so if you go here, oh, look at this. Wow. They actually have a, wow, a amazing amount of salt. So we could take that to Sargoth, which is pretty good i think it's going to be pretty good maybe and uh yeah also we can assess local prices now as well because we have artimena who has a trade skill of three so that's great as well anyway as you can see right here you buy any of these things and you can take them to other places and so on and so forth i think i probably should have worked out the trade prices before buying the spices and the salt because that probably would have made sense yeah so that is something to uh, think about when you are doing a trade route you definitely want to try and work out prices before you actually buy the things even though spices here are pretty cheap so that's pretty decent oh yeah i should also buy some more food there we go all right so now we can go back and i think i'm probably gonna make a stop off at kudan and maybe we'll fight some 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 step bandits should we fight some step bandits how many people need to level up yeah, I, I guess we could. Are they faster than me? Yeah, much faster. But that is okay, because we have gotten into a battle with them, and they actually brought a friend as well, which is actually really nice. So 41, 49, let's do it. And I actually did not show you my uh, settings in the previous episode, but they are actually exactly the same. I have not changed it since episode one, and uh, yeah, it's going to stay that way. It is literally just going to stay that way, because... Let's face it, it's an Iron Man challenge, you know? Some people actually <laughs> were rather amusing, saying, you don't actually die in this game, though, do you? And that's true. Yeah, you don't actually die in this game. Technically, you just, well, get knocked unconscious, I guess. But the thing is, is if in any game your HP goes down to zero, that's basically you dying. It doesn't really matter about the semantics of the whole thing. And people just generally tend to be a bit picky about that. But... Anyway, the point is, is that, uh, yeah, if we do get down to zero, that's uh, that's indeed a game over. I'm actually kind of surprised that we have, oh yeah, we have Nord Warriors, and we have Clethi, who are using their thrown weapons, which is pretty cool. These step bandits are really getting melted, are they not? Yeah. Arty men are getting a kill? What, 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 what's going on? This is ludicrous. As opposed to Ice Cube? <laughs> Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a wonderful joke. Yeah, great. Okay, well, anyway, hopefully I will be able to maybe get a couple of kills, because I haven't gotten any kills so far in this episode, have I? Don't think so. Seems like it's it's going quite difficult for Iron Man Bear Till to actually get any kills or any opportunities in this episode, so I don't know, don't know what's going on with that, but 
I guess it's the enemies, so they're just proving to be a little harder to pin down, shall we say. Anyway, that is indeed a victory for us. A very nice victory indeed. We gained five renown from that, which I've got to say is really cool. Not going to be taking it. Ah, oh, you know what? I'm going to be taking the peasant women just because I really want them to level up into Sword Sisters. As I've said, I really like the Sword Sister unit. And we got some horses, and I'm going to be using one of these horses. Because, let's face it, we need we need the horses to speed up our uh, world map speed as well. So that's going to be really, really important for us. And, uh, okay, so Clethy is liking Dashavi. So, yeah, Clethy is liking Dashavi or Mateld. I, I don't, I'm not sure which one she was talking about, but that's fine. That is great, because that means that she might not leave. Uh, okay, yeah, so Dashavi... Uh, yeah, Dashavi is complaining about me sending Bunduk, but we kind of need to send these guys off to get the right to rule. And don't worry, Dashavi, I'm not going to be having Bunduk in my army for the foreseeable future. So she doesn't need to worry about that. But anyway, let's go into Kudan here, see how much I can sell the spices for. Yeah, look at that. Spices sell for 844. We bought one of them for 500 and another one for 400. So we're making a really nice profit here. And is there anything else that I can do? Not particularly. So I can just sell that for a clear 1500, 1600. And if there's anyone else around here that we might be able to recruit, no, nah, it doesn't seem like it. Oh, yeah. I should probably also spend a little bit of time in the marketplaces looking for. Whoa, this balanced Warhammer is actually really fantastic. This is something. Okay, here's the thing I would use this balanced Warhammer in a regular playthrough like no one's business. Just look at the stats of this thing. Really, really crazy. The only thing that it doesn't have, which I would highly recommend trying to get, is Crush Through Blocks. Crush Through Blocks is one of my most favorite traits of a weapon ever. And Bonus Against Shields. Bonus Against Shields is something very, very important as well. Like, for example, this Heavy Vrush right here. This thing, having a Bonus Against Shields, is fantastic. That's really good. It's going to destroy shields really, really fast. And uh, this has the crush through blocks, but you probably wouldn't want to use the sledgehammer unless you have a very high two-handed weapon proficiency, because otherwise it's going to be super slow. It's an unbalanced weapon, so it's going to be difficult to defend with and all that sort of thing. But we are only talking about the Iron Man challenge right here. And as a result, I've actually just noticed a fantastic weapon. And I'm probably going to take it. I'm probably going to take it because I am going to use this to take many, many people prisoner, and then we're going to be making, oh yeah, we're going to be making bank. We're going to be making a lot of bank right there. So let's go up to Rivercheck. Maybe there will be, actually, you know what? Who's the, who's the guy? Who's the guy that owns Kudan? I'm actually going to chase these guys down. Maybe they'll bring a friend. They didn't bring a friend. That's kind of unfortunate, but it's okay because we can, I think we can pretty easily run down the opponent here. I was hoping that we could maybe get the other band of 20 in, so we'd have 42 enemies instead of just 22. But I can take a couple of these prisoner nevertheless. Now, here's the thing. When you are trying to take prisoners, especially in an Iron Man challenge, you really, really want to be careful. Because it can be very easy, especially for me, to get carried away in the pursuit of of prisoners and you really really want to get those prisoners you certainly do i i know i do but it is one of those things that you're going to have to be really careful about because you really don't want to run in get yourself murdered for nothing because let's face it some of these guys are yeah look at this i got hit on the head that's not very nice but anyway some of these guys are literally going to sell for about 70 dinars and you losing the challenge just literally because you wanted to get one additional prisoner or whatever it may be you know, it's not really worth it in that case. You just got to put it in that perspective. And uh, I'm, I'm basically saying that for me and my benefit, more, maybe more than you, because I, I, I don't know how you play the game. I know how I play. You know. Usually I'm just running in there, flailing my arms about like a headless chicken. That's how I do things. Anyway, there you go. We got some prisoners right there, which is not too bad. Don't have that much space, unfortunately. I should have really sold at Kudan. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, so Dashavi and Clethy get on, which is really nice. So I think once I get Lezalit, Artie Mena will be slightly better in uh, terms of dealing with him. Or in terms of his attitude, shall we say. 
So I think that's probably going to be a good idea. Oh, I've got a leather jerkin here. Probably going to give that to someone. Going to sell the rest. Oh, no, this is actually a really good mace for taking prisoners. So I probably will keep that. Uh, yeah, is this... Uh, this is okay. I could give that to Deshavi, actually. So we might do that. Let's put all our horses down here. And I think that's good. Okay, so we're going to be taking the salt up to Wercheg, I believe. So, yeah. That, that is a pretty heavy investment that we have there right now, so don't don't worry too much about our money situation at this time. Mm, probably not going to level anyone else up right now either, so let's see what's going on here. Uh, IT Mena needs a helmet. Uh, shall we give him? No, I'm not going to give him that. Does anyone, does anyone really want a mace? Probably not. We're just going to give Deshavi a bow, a little bit of an upgrade, a little bit of an upgraded... Actually, is that upgraded? No, that's actually worse. It's actually worse than what she was using. Wow, I'm actually kind of surprised about that. Oh well, never mind. Okay. So at least now that we've sold a little bit, I actually wanted to find out who the Lord is. Kramuk Noyan. Okay. Well, where is he? Let's go in and speak to his lady friend. Two of them. And we will then ask where Kramuk is. There he is. Should be close to Mazig. Okay, Mazig. Okay, where is that? Uh, if it's far away, I'm not going to really bother with it. Mazig? I seem to think it's over here somewhere, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, okay, well, that's... Wow, it's actually really far. Oh, there it is. It's all the way down there. Oh, wow. I was super off. Okay, yeah, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. I was hoping that I might be able to get the Destroy Tundra Bandit Lair quest, and that would enable us to get another 1,500, which would actually be pretty significant at this point because that would probably push us over the amount for a uh, wonderful... Oh! <laughs> for a wonderful Weaver and Die Works, I was going to say. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. So, yeah, because we are a mercenary, it is going to prevent us from going to Wercheg and actually... Oh, no! Wait a minute! I've actually just forgotten. Yes, Wercheg is actually under control by the Vagiers. I forgot that they made that really, really fast push to take Wercheg in the first, I don't even know, first 60 days of the game. It was, uh, or first 20 days of the game, more like. They were very, very quick about the whole thing so yeah that's fantastic okay so now i don't even need to worry so much but isn't it that we have to sell sargoth sell sell salt at sargoth not sell sargoth yeah i think it is that so <laughs> it might very well be that my my uh my plans are all for naught basically so that's not great is it uh that's problematic oh dear well uh, i i guess We've got to look at it from the bright side as well, because the bright side is that once we make peace, inevitably, with the Nords, we will be gaining some right to rule as a result, and I think that's going to be pretty nice. So I guess that's not too bad, and I, I can just continue fighting a whole bunch of units in the area and just earning a lot of cash that way. So I don't really need to sell my salt at the moment, but it would be really nice, because uh, it would just make... A whole bunch of sense to me right now but oh well never mind okay there's Beheshtar I can now say to him that he is no longer necessary so he can just go and do what he needs to do and I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to send off Forentis now as well there we go and we will wait a few days and then we will send off the other people that we haven't sent before so Clethi is the only one that we haven't sent off, so we'll send off Mateld, Artimena, and Deshavi all in sequence, and then they will all return at some point. Ooh, Sea Raiders, 25. Stay away from here, Mamun. This is mine. Thank you. Okay, he's actually, he's actually listening to me. I can't believe it. Fantastic. Nice you Can you imagine in the future having a game like this that actually responds to your voice and, uh, you know, you can say various things and it will actually you know, listen to you, or maybe not listen to you in some cases. I know that there are actually a couple of voice-activated games that are out there, 
and uh, they're they're very impressive for a uh, you know for for a very niche area of the market. But uh, I'm talking about in these kinds of games, you know, because you, I, I would expect in in things like um, I don't know shooters, you know, World War Two shooters and, and things like that, and uh, well, just in general, it would be pretty cool to have that kind of experience where you can talk to your AI teammates and uh, you know see how see how it goes from there with, with that but <laughs> that's uh, that's quite far in the future I think it's pretty far in the future or maybe there just isn't a, isn't a market for it at the moment oh well anyway uh, we're gonna be rolling in cash from our prisoners I think and bear in mind even if I do lose a couple of man at arms here or any high tier unit it's not really going to make that big a difference. So, you know, nothing to really worry about there either. Anyway, four renown, three morale, nice. Two sea raiders to add to that. And we got a helm, nice. We got a helm. Okay, so this is great. Got two helms, but I'm only going to take one. And then we're going to get rid of something else. Get rid of the hunting bow. Take the throwing axe, because these are balanced throwing axes. They're really, really good. Or at least they're really good for selling. And we're going to go over to River Chegg. And see what we can do here so can i sell this salt for a, a, a lot more yeah i can i think i can actually sell this salt here and it might actually give me a decent amount so maybe we'll do that i'll sell the leather jerk in now and we can sell this and we can sell the chips nomad saber as well we can sell artimena's outfit there we go okay so that's 569 and then i'm also thinking about there's winged mace as well. I just happened to come across the military hammer first. The military hammer, in my opinion, is slightly better just because it has the heavy prefix and that makes it do a little bit more damage. Uh, Bardish, one of my favorite weapons. There's and there, Wow, there's another heavy military hammer. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy this and I'm gonna, literally just going to trade all the sort for it. And uh, that that's going to be really good. So we've got another 800 dinars from that. So we are at 9,000 now and we have improved our gear dramatically because you may think oh but look, look at this you've just you've just traded you know the the profits from that for nothing but no we have actually done a pretty decent thing here where i'm actually going to give matelt this heavy military hammer so she can actually take prisoners alongside me and that's going to make all the difference it really is so here's a ransom broker here we go 80 for one step bandit that's actually pretty good 100 actually per one of the taker bandits that's really fantastic too and 112 for sea raiders so we are now at 9700 and we are very close to our goal of getting a weaver and die works and once we have that weaver and die works let me tell you it's going to go fantastically because that will then mean that i don't need to worry so much about making cash and i don't have to worry about putting myself into so much <laughs> so much danger i guess you could say and otherwise boya mariga is actually in here so you know what we're gonna do we're gonna go up here we're gonna speak to him about his task and maybe just maybe he's gonna give us the ability to oh yeah there we go give me this thank you very much okay let me just check my food situation real quick food's not going too badly let's sell the nomad boots as well as don't really want to sell anything else so we can just leave that. And we'll just move all of this to the bottom so that we know exactly what we're doing with our loot. And then we're going to head in to the Sea Raider landing. All right, so it's just basically Mattel this time around. And we'll probably take in Dashavi as well and the others. And we'll see how it goes. But we're going to get a massive amount of cash from this battle. Oh, yeah. Also, Artimena needs a shield. So I should probably buy him a shield or I should probably give him a shield that my Matt Eld has. She has two shields. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, the idiotic bear tail took over 100% there. Anyway, I think we'll be okay as long as Artimena... Why are you running in there? <laughs> Why are you running in there, Artimena? Oh, he's, he's an absolute monster. Look at him. He's just like, I don't care whether I get hit in the face by an axe. Look at him, he's getting a kill. I am actually really surprised. Wow, fantastic. Fantastic work, sir. Okay, well, thankfully, he's doing great. Get another kill, Artie Mena. Come on, I'm holding this guy for you. Oh, well, someone else is going in there. 
Yeah, because, of course, if you knock anyone unconscious here, it doesn't mean anything. You don't really get to take them prisoner or anything like that. Matel's now going absolutely beast in comparison to what she was in the previous episode where she was in a competition against Forentis, but, yeah, I think there were a couple of issues about that. Artie Manor on, on another killing spree. Fantastic. Oh, wow. Okay, so it seems like Deshavi and Clethy went off together and they really did not have a very good time of things. They just got outnumbered. Which is to be expected, I suppose. Oh, ooh, did you see that? I think I might have... Well, I don't think I would have died from that. But uh, that was a bit close for my liking. Okay, well, there you go. Let's see if we can... Yeah, there we go. Okay, Whew. Okay, I think we're fine now. I think we are okay. Uh, it's four against three. I mean, you never know. You might actually see me be in a situation where I am outnumbered if my forces continually get themselves killed. Which is not very good. Especially if they are up against these sea raiders that have these massive two-handed axes and come equipped with chainmail. They're very powerful, you know? They're the, the they're the, the sort of like top tier of the of the Sea Raider clans. But not as top as this Swadian Knight. Good work. Good work. There we go. Okay, fantastic. So now we can just take this. Dried meat is actually gonna be pretty good. There's a wooden shield as well. So I'm just gonna give that to Artie Mena. He ha he deserves it. Gonna get him a better one as time goes on. And Clethy already has a shield. The Shavi, can she use this? Can she use a shield? Yep, she can use a shield. We're actually going to give her this Nomad Saber as well. It fits her a little bit better than the Quarterstaff, in my opinion. And she's using some pretty awful boots. So let's give her the Nomad boots. And she's using some decent arrows. Nothing too bad, but it would be good to get her something a little bit better. All right, so that seems pretty good to me. And now we can go back and speak to Boyar Mariga. And he is going to finally allow us to, well, get a Weaver in Dye Works which is very exciting. And you know what you can do then? Oh yeah. You can go down to Rodok territory and you can buy some of the, uh, I think you can buy raw silk or whatever the raw ingredients are. And then you can take it into your Weaver and Dye Works and it can then get you more profits, which is actually kind of cool. Or if you want to, what you can do is you can tell the Weaver and Dye Works not to sell the raw goods if you know where to sell it better. So then you can literally do your own trading if you want to. Anyway, let's go into uh, the streets and there's the Guildmaster. Thankfully, it's right there. I was actually dreading trying to find it, but there you go. Weaver and Dye Works, look at that, 969 dinars a week. Oh yeah, of course the prices are going to fluctuate, but I think that's pretty decent. I think that's pretty decent. Oh yeah, I like it. All right, so let's just sell everything else that we can. There's not actually not that much... I'm just going to buy a buy a bunch of food here because then we can just trade the money and sell that. There we go. And that is actually fine. All right. So that is great. There we go. We have our Weavery and Dye Works. We've got a thousand dinars left over and we have a number of companions that have leveled up from that task. Fantastic. Everything's going very nicely so far in the Iron Man challenge. And next, next up is, well... Earning more renown. So in other words, taking part in some vassal battles. That's what's going to come up. I think I'm probably going to get killed in one of those. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.